In this video, I will be going over uh, some of the, the important elements of the research paper template. In APA style, there is a format um, that students are expected to use. It's called a student paper um, format. And the way papers look, um, and this is a, a, a PDF of what I uploaded to D2L in Word. And you, what you'll want to do is download that Word version and, and work straight from uh, the template. So your title, um, titles are always centered, they're always in bold, um, and your title needs to make clear the topic that you're exploring in your paper. Then you provide your name, your department, the class, my name, or the instructor's name, and the date. Um, and that should be the due date of the paper. Um, it doesn't show it here in this um, rendering, but the page number is top right, and I'll show you in a second how to um, add page numbers in Word. Um, unlike research reports, you do not need a, a running head or a short title for student papers. Um, when you start page two, the title is repeated. Again, it's centered and bold. Um, and then uh, you'll have your introductory paragraph, your summaries of your articles. And as I note over here on the right, um, it's uh, I would prefer that you replace the words Article 1, Article 2, Article 3 with something more descriptive. Um, you know, short two or three words that just connect the reader to um, what's being written. Um, so you should have three uh, pages worth of article summaries. Um, I failed to copy and paste. This section should include the summaries of your second article. There should be the same statement under Article 3. Then you have a paragraph about limitations, um, a paragraph about what you learned, and a paragraph about future consumption. Um, conclude your paper with a reflection. Uh, of that and get, make sure that you give those specific examples outlined in the assignment sheet. The last page will be your references page. The word references, and it has to be the word references. We don't say works cited. We don't say sources. Um, we say uh, references. It should be bold, bold and centered. Um, another kind, kind of uh, item about APA style, um, we we typically, unlike some of the other sciences, psychology now, according to the APA manual, prefers that students not use the distant third person, but instead use the first person. Um, so instead of saying, um, not uh, referring to yourself using words like I um, or they, them, um, you, they, I mean, that's what they want you to do, is to, to use the first person to talk about yourself um, as the person doing the work. Now, lots of, of other faculty members in other disciplines are going to tell you the third person is required um, in formal writing. Um, the APA has moved away from that because, um, frankly, writing in third person is confusing to readers because you're not sure who, who the, the writer is talking about. So I don't want you to do that. Um, also, one other thing in psychology, we do not do footnoting. So if you try to use the um, citation and reference generator through Microsoft Word, for example, um, by you know tethering um, little numbers to references on your reference page, I'm going to tell you to stop doing that because that's not how APA style works. Um, and I'll show you here in a second um, a little more information on that. So that's the template for the paper. Um, this is my sample reference page. When I sat down to, to pull together information for you to use as, as you're preparing for your project, um, I went to SciPost. Um, I looked up, um, I think my search term was was depression and cardiovascular disease. Cause I don't know that day, that's what I was interested in thinking about. <laughs> um, and they had a lot of hits. Um, there's, there's a well-known correlation between 
heart disease risk and depression. So I wanted to see what new research has been out there um, on this topic. So I found three articles um, written by um, SciPost authors uh, describing uh, research that's relatively recent. So one study was from 2020. Um, the other two were from 2024, um, where they're looking at this connection between depression and heart disease. Um, some exploring inflammatory pathways, looking at um, other elements biologically that are going on. And then in this one, the connection between anxiety and heart disease risk. Depression is covered in the, the Griggs and Jackson textbook, so I provide a reference for the Griggs and Jackson textbook here. Now notice, in APA style, the expectation is that you use what's called a hanging indent. Um, so at the top, um, the first line of each reference is flush left, then the um, remaining lines of each individual let, um, component of the, the reference are um, tabbed over one. Now I'll show you in a second how to do this kind of thing in Word um, because you know once you learn this simple trick it, it will make your life a lot easier when you put reference pages together. Um, what you'll notice here um, each author and the order of the authors matters. Um, Alexander, in this case, that's the last name of the first author. That means that Alexander, um, first initial L, uh, is the lead author. And then it's descending priority after that. So Roberts contributed a, less than Alexander would, contributed less than both of them. Um, so you can't change the order. Even though these happen to be in alphabetical order, Alexander is the primary author. Um, so notice some things here you have the last name a comma first initial period comma space last name comma first initial period space middle initial period space and so on in references we use an ampersand instead of the word n and um, then the date of publication the title of the article um, should be in sentence case and in italics. By sentence case, they mean that um, the first word is capitalized, but the remaining words, unless they are an acronym or a proper noun, are not capitalized. Um, that title is then followed by a period, the organization name, which in this case was SciPost, and then the web link. Um, and you need to make sure that that web link is, is live and takes the reader to the right place. Um, now we used to, you may have learned that you need to put a date where you retrieved the information. Um, APA no longer requires that, um, seeing it is not particularly relevant or helpful um, to readers. Textbooks, oh, I've noticed a mistake that I've made see how easy it is. There should be a comma after the period that comes after the letter A here. So Griggs, um, RA, and Jackson, SL. The title of the book, just like with the title of web pages, um, is in sentence case. In this case, there's a colon. Uh, the word that follows a colon is always capitalized, but the other words are not. So the first word in the title is capitalized, anything following a colon. Um, or a proper noun is going to be capitalized. Um, super ticky tacky thing here. When you say sixth edition, it is not italicized. It is in parentheses. And then you put the publisher. Now, again, you may have learned that you should provide a city um, and state or country uh, for a publisher. But these days, publishing companies are international and they have um, sometimes 30 or 40 specific locations, and it's impossible for you to list them all. So APA has just done away with that requirement. We no longer have to put um, that publishing location information in our references for books. So that's the reference page. Um, now, let me go back and open up my 
sample reference page. in Word for you. Now, um, if you don't know, you know, you can change whether something's in bold, not bold with this um, part of the home menu. Now, the online version of Word um, through Office 365 may have a slightly different appearance than what you're seeing here, but all of the same functions are possible. Um, for page numbers, you have to double click in the space uh, called the header and um, after you're done tinkering with it you have to close it again but you can add page numbers so um, the way I typically do it is I go to this option of current position and then I move it over to where I want it to be um, and that's how you can format your page numbers is through the header footer function now with um, hanging indents the way you can produce them so like right now, I'm going to show you how to turn it off and turn it on. So here I went into the paragraph function right here where it says paragraph. And then I open that up. Make sure that the indentation left and right is set to zero and the spacing before and after is set to zero. And um, the special is set to hanging. So when I uh, unclick that, Notice how it's all flush left. Um, a lot of students will turn in something that looks like this. That's not APA style. You do not want to just tab over um, and make it like a paragraph. So instead, you have to go up to paragraph and change it to hanging. And then it will be correct. Um, sometimes students will try and do this with their space bar. Um, that's really awkward. It's prone to mistakes and it will screw up your link. Um, so that it makes it not take you to the appropriate place. Um, for journal articles, um, just so you can see uh, some examples, when we uh, cite journal articles and then reference them, you could have um, the author names. And in this particular case, you've got an author who has um, accent marks in the name. Those can be kind of tricky uh, to copy um, and to get get correct. So if you run into that kind of situation, um, let me know and I can help you with that. Um, notice that you've got commas separating each separate author. Um, the, remember again, first author means the person who made the greatest contribution. In a journal article, you give the year of publication, you give the title of the article, and that title is in sentence case. Uh, again, first word, and anything following a colon or another punctuation mark is capitalized unless it's a proper noun. Um, and then the title of the journal that the article is published in is in title case and in italics. The volume number is in italics and then you have page numbers. Now in a lot of cases now um, journal articles are published online so you don't really have a a set of static page numbers unless they give you a print version. Um, but there will be an, a number identifier that's used. And then the final thing with a journal article is something called a digital object identifier. It's a DOI number. And those are typically provided by um, the publisher of journal articles. So here's another example of a journal article um, and still another example of a journal article or of a side post article. Now, when you're making in-text citations, um, what you do, um, and these are just these are just examples of how to do it. So I've I've repeated the reference here. If I'm writing about uh, fake news, um, I could say something like, and this is called using a signal phrase. Dolan reported on SitePost that emotional stability and rationality predict sharing of fake news. Or I could word it differently and use a full in-text citation. Um, according to a new study, sharing fake news and variables like emotional stability and rationality appear to be related. And then the in-text citation fully in parentheses is Dolan, 2023. For journal articles with multiple authors, um, we used to have to write them all out the very first time. Uh, we don't have to do that anymore. Um, instead, we use the first author and the, um, 
the phrase et al, which means and others. Um, at least that's what it means to me. Um, notice that et is a whole word, et, no period. Al is short for alia, um, so al period, no comma, just like this. Escola Gascon at all investigated who is most vulnerable to being influenced by fake news. Or alternatively, you could say several personality profiles such as schizotypal and histrionic may predict the likelihood of sharing fake news. Parentheses, Escola Gascon et al, comma, 2023. And, you know, these examples are similar. So hopefully that gives you some sense of how your reference page should look. Um, please notice that there are no extra spaces in between references. They are not numbered. And they are in alphabetical order by author's first author's last name. And that's about all I, I have in terms of uh, structuring that part of the assignment.